Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello and welcome to The People's View. The People's View is sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee and uh, you can reach uh, them on their website at uh, nashuagop.org. Today we have uh, our candidate for state senate uh, in the uh, wards of the eastern side of uh, uh, Nashua and it's, uh, Representative Joe Krasinski. Joe, welcome Carl, aboard. Good to meet you. And uh, now that you had one year under your belt as a representative, you jump right into the fire of being a sen running for a Senate. Well, it's been fun. Uh -huh. It's been interesting, and the reality of it has been uh, no longer is it abstract. No, no. Now it's, it's gonna, for real. It's going to be a big job. Yeah. What do you think you uh, can do up there uh, if you get elected as a Senate? Well, I have a couple of uh, directions I want to go. I'll, I'll use it as objectives. I've, few specifics if you want to get into okay. those, but I think I want to see if we can make New Hampshire a little bit more business friendly so that it'll be more jobs mm -hmm. encouraging mm -hmm. because small businesses and businesses are what create the jobs, creative jobs that bring mm -hmm. money in from other places, not just redistribute money around within the, within the state. And I think if we help to create the environment, let's look at things like the business enterprise tax the uh, business profits tax, and some of the other fees and things that we have that make us not be up there high on the list amongst other states. Now, we have a New Hampshire advantage that I think very few states can come mm -hmm. close to. We don't have the income tax. We don't have the sales tax. And there's not a lot of states that even approach that. that. And for that reason, we also have to keep government small. The larger government gets, the more intrusive it gets in our lives and in business and mm -hmm. corporate lives. Mm -hmm. And corporations will go where they feel more comfortable. They'll hire more people. And I think we can attract higher level companies that will fund better paying jobs. We have some jobs openings in uh, several industries around here that, that are granted BAE is the largest employer, but there are other two growing companies that most people don't look at hardly, and that's Sturm Ruger and mm -hmm. Sig Sauer. Mm -hmm. And speaking with the president over at Sig, and this was mirrored by the representative from Sturm Ruger, they're looking for people who are hands-on, willing to get in and mach do machine work. They're looking for engineers that don't want to sit at a CAD system playing on a computer. They want one that will conceive an idea, go into the shop, build it, test it, try it, heat treat it, test it out. And I was told that even in this economy where their jobs are tight, they have openings and they have a hard time filling them mm. sometimes. Are there certain skills that they're looking for that we're not providing? Or uh, There are some skills that are not being provided adequately. I think we have to enhance our Mm -hmm. junior colleges and our community colleges more than we have in the past. Simply because a lot of people aren't going to go for a four-year degree that may promise a higher entry level for them, but there may not be that many entry-level, high-level high jobs. And it might so not have just to start be somewhere. Uh, either. I have found that the community colleges prepare them for hands-on, ready-to-go jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, Things like in electronics, there are there are schools schools around that most people don't even know about that teach how to do proper soldering to meet certain standards in the mm -hmm. so, in the microelectronics business. There are automotive technician positions where they, they can fill them directly from the school. They may not have all of the experience, but they have the direct knowledge. They know how to go about it. I understand that Nashville's community college is doing Excellent. real well. And they're, they're expanding. I, right. I spoke to them a few years back, hoping that perhaps I could 
start some sort of a program up there in my own field. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they got tied up on other things at the time. But uh, if we had, every time I needed a person and I looked for, for an experienced person, I had to literally steal them away from another company, which isn't the way it should be. It should be where, well, I need somebody that can knows a little bit about high vacuum. Well, I wish I could go to some school. The closest you get is UMass Lowell. Mm -hmm. And they don't really have, they're teaching people to work with higher level ideas, but industry needs people in between. Everybody can't be the chief. You do need some Indians. Right. And right. some in between Indians. Uh, the thing I think we should enhance is that because then we will be receptive to companies who want to bring in a, a, a electronics, machining, various technical type work, similar to what they have closer to the coast where they did some automotive works, coatings mm -hmm. and things like that. These jobs are out there, but we have to make ourselves attractive for the industry to want to come here. Yeah. What do we have better that they don't, that they don't have that they need? We have that. to make sure we are providing them with the skilled labor that they do need. Absolutely. I mean, whether it's skilled machinists or high-level chemists or whatever. And along with that, not just the, uh, the, those skill sets, we have to make the environment friendly to the business. Mm -hmm. We don't want to tax the hell out of them. I'm sorry I use that word, but <laughs> sometimes I've had that used to me yeah. by some smaller companies, particularly in the last several years where there were a whole slew of miscellaneous, I'll call them nuisance and in some cases almost backbreaking things for a small company starting off a limited liability corporation to get hit with some of the new mm -hmm. regulations and the new taxes and, and things that they had thrown at them back in 2008, 2009. There's a local laser company, Laser Advantage. I know the people personally there. Mm -hmm. They started that. It was just three guys who worked as service engineers for another company. Let's start our own company. Well, they started off in the least expensive place in the mill yard mm -hmm. that they could get space in. Well, they've grown now since then, and they've grown to, they have a spot on Amherst Street now. They've hired more people. Now, instead of just servicing things and providing a service, they're starting to manufacture. Mm. And this is what we need, people like that. But right. they almost folded their tent and moved somewhere else. They, they said, we can't stand it. Who do they think they are? We're having a hard time even making a go of it, and that they want to add more fees and more taxes. This may not be hard for a BAE to fit, oh, yeah. but for a small company starting off, these men were working 12, 14-hour days. And to have that thrown at them? Yeah, they didn't want to put up with some of that. But I think, you know, we turning, we're turning the tide on this uh, uh, business uh, uh, friendliness. I think uh, a lot of the agencies realize they have, they're the people that are going to be supporting them. They're the people that are going to be paying them with taxes. Yeah. You know? And uh, they're being a much more business friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying, they, j they really don't know how and they're just learning how to go out and do things and be of service to their customer rather than have them, you know, they're trying to figure out, well, how can we get some more fines in there to stuff uh, our coffee? You touch with. a nerve on me right there. <laughs> While I was in industry, and I've worked in several states, uh, Texas, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire, I could recall having people in the environmental services there were in, in one particular nearby state. They have a group that handles health and another that handles safety. And they had a program where if you invited them in to do an audit on you and a survey, whatever they found, they would not penalize you for. They would work with you and help you mm. in order to mitigate that problem. And it was a team type of a effort. And... I thought that was great. When I came to New Hampshire, I did not find that no. in our own DES. I found almost the opposite. It was almost a, it was a surface niceness, but underneath there was a hardness there that, well, we're going to find, some, they're doing something wrong. We'll find it, and we're going to nail them. Mm -hmm. And when I found out up at the, being up at the legislature for the last session, uh, I found out that certain departments are funded in large part I mean, when you get 50% of your funding from penalties and fines and fees, that's not right. 
That's right. Your, your, your charter is to improve safety in the environment, not to see how much you can grab, yeah. grab out of yeah. a people. And I was extremely safety conscious when I worked. I was a engineering lab manager, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a single incident on my, my watch over those mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. either from the city, the state, the federal, anybody, and our own safety people who were oftentimes harder. But there were a lot of things that were very low level that weren't a hazard or a problem and they could be corrected. Mm -hmm. But whenever the state was going to come in to do an audit or a check, we were on our toes for the simplest little things. Mm -hmm. They would go far beyond what their charter, I think, was because, as the rumor had it, they were out picking beans. Mm -hmm. And I'll use that term because that was a term used by one of the supervisors sending their inspectors out. <laughs> Go pick some beans, we need some money. Which I didn't think a, an agency is tasked to do that. No, they're not. And uh, now that we're changing it so that they don't get to keep their fines, I think that... Uh, they should be an advocate or right. a, at least a, or some sort of a... They should work with you. To improve and, things. Yeah, right. We're all on the same... We yeah. live in the same planet. We live in the same town. And we all want safety. It's not a we gotcha wanna, game. Right. It's not a... It's not something that, well, I think it could be turned around. The philosophy mm -hmm. has to I be do. turned around. I, and I think we're starting to see some of that. I, I've worked with the Department of Labor, and uh, you had you know, the same conditions. Mm -hmm. But they're now uh, seeing how they improve their education program and make sure that uh, new companies, that when they get started, they get a, a CD with all the rules and regulations so they have a checklist to go Which through. is how it should be. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, some of our agencies are user-friendly. They're, they're more amenable to people who are trying to get something. They see us as a, as a resource for the state. We see them as a, a resource for us to use, or I use us because I did start two businesses before. <laughs> and they're well, su successfully uh, running two cars. Those are the skills that they need up there, uh, people in the business that uh, are, uh, have experienced and, and know what they, the, the problems are. I think the state is turning around a lot. Uh, some states already have. The federal government, unfortunately, still has to change the slope of that line. Uh, yes, uh, it's something that's a little bit harder to do, <coughs> but we can change ourselves. Yeah, and, we don't uh, need to go there. So uh, your skills and your background uh, are things that will help you in the Senate to see what has to be I changed. I sure hope so. Uh, and uh, you've worked with the Senate with some of the bills. Did you... Uh, uh, co-sign any of the bills? Or? I had, was with, on, on several Senate bills there, some of the social issue bills mm -hmm. I did, and uh, we did have one uh, subcommittee that I was on with uh, Senator Forrester mm -hmm. and <coughs> Senator Sanborn, and uh, at, it was the prison privatization. Oh, yeah. I learned an awful lot from that. Mm -hmm. I think when you're in the position of a, of a representative, you don't always know all of the details you come into the problem or the area of study with an approach or an attitude or a willingness to learn and an ability to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we bring to the legislature more than a lot of specific facts. We bring a way of thinking. And it was quite interesting. I, I visited every prison in the state no. and came to some conclusions that were congruent with other members and a few that may not have been. I think we have a, and I'll say this, we have a fine prison staffing system, the guards. Mm -hmm. They were, they had a native tribal knowledge there of the, they could read the people that were there. Mm -hmm. They had very few incidents. <clears throat> we walked in and amongst the prisoners, the, the warden and one of the guards and myself. And I said, are you afraid to walk through? They said, we know who the bad guys and who aren't. There are people in here that made a mistake. They're not out antisocial totally yeah, or anything. Right. And I thought that was something we didn't want to lose. We may want to privatize a whole lot of other things, like the, which we are, the, the pharmacy, the medical, the counseling, and things of that nature. Uh, also, did you look into uh, having the uh, people uh, produce things? You know, that that was know another was part that I yeah. really enjoyed that. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, I thought they should push that a little bit further mm -hmm. than they have. Uh, they have a training program in Concord where they train 
prisoners on small engine repair, snowmobiles, ATVs, grass cutters, lawnmowers, a little of everything, anything with small engines. They also teach woodworking, upholstering, and things like that. It may sound mundane, but everybody uses it. Yeah. And <clears throat> they should be having more of their goods and their services utilized by other governmental agencies, schools, businesses, and other things. Most businesses don't know they exist because they need somebody as an advocate in there. Well, I, I, I heard about that, and I wanted to get the county prisons in on it because it's the same question. You know, These are low-level people. People are waiting for trials before sentencing. It also helps prevent recidivism. That's right. They can come out of there, and they have a saleable skill. They don't have to go back to crime to be able to fund their life. They can get a job working for somebody rebuilding something or fixing something or repairing something or doing something. And there's actually a competition amongst the prisoners to get onto some of these oh, programs. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's not as fully staffed as I'd like to see it. And well, I hope that uh, becomes and develops into something that's very useful. It's, I think it's, it's a win-win situation. The warden up in Concord said that he was looking for, they were going to fill a position up there for someone to be like a sales marketing agent for these services and products around through the state. Mm. And I said, you need any help on it, tell me what you want. Mm. Uh, I, I think it was, a, it, they were treating the people like human beings. Let's, let's bring them back into the fold. They made a mistake. Granted, there are in the, the, some of the areas of the prison, there are people that are truly yeah. need to be there. Yeah. <laughs> to paraphrase, uh, he was that actor, uh, he passed away, uh, uh, was a <coughs> comedian was in that one prison movie with uh, there were two older comedians, uh, I can't remember his name, one, and he says, he went down to the Arizona prison when they were filming that, and he says, oh, I was going to talk to the warden, we got all these brothers in here, we got all these guys, mm -hmm. and they're not being treated right and everything, he says, after we got into filming, he says, Boy, am I glad they got prison. <laughs> there There's were some, some people. He says, people. I met a, a man who killed six people. Uh -huh. And I asked him, why did you kill those people? He says, they were there. <laughs> That's the kind of person you need to keep behind bars yeah. for the rest of their yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's an awful lot of positive things that can be done, from the regulatory agencies to make the ground user-friendly to businesses, particularly small businesses. Large companies can afford a safety group. Small companies can't. It's one man, two men right, wear right. all the hats. <clears throat> and if we do that properly and we get our schools geared to making these people, preparing them for the real world, not for a make-believe world, we need to get more bang for our buck from the colleges. Definitely. It isn't just passing out how many degrees did you pass. Were mm -hmm. those degrees worth anything? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, unfortunately, are in majors that there's very few openings. Uh, Unfortunately, and we see things even from going from the high school into community colleges. I was very disappointed in seeing uh, Nashua's uh, uh, students from the Nashua high schools having to go through uh, uh, remedial you know, English, remedial, remedial math. Or whatever. I, I, uh, I, I remember that. I was disappointed in that. Uh, some people, uh, it was one, uh, several people that, that had four different deficiencies. But anyway, uh, you have a big territory uh, to yes, cover. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's the reality that's been hitting me. I've got thousands uh, of people to meet. Right. And how can people get a hold of you? What's the Well, best way to do I have been passing out my literature. Uh -huh. I've been banging on doors. and every, I stopped being selective about where I am. I'm hitting 100% of the doors wow. with literature. And if no one's home, I'll Leave a little note. Know. They can call me. My telephone number, my website is there. Uh, they can get a hold of me. I do answer my calls, as you noticed. Okay. I, I just got your message this morning, uh -huh. and I, my first answer was probably then after it was good. yes. Good. Well, I'm glad you made it here down here today. But I do want to meet a lot more people. I've been to various functions and things. I think my prime effort is going to still be banging on doors. I met so many interesting people. It, it was almost, except for my feet being sore, <laughs> it was a distinct pleasure yeah. meeting these people. Yeah. It's all kinds. 
and they'll pose questions that I won't get from somebody that's an experience in, in politics. Right. Well, we'll put your number, your phone number, your website, and your uh, email uh, on the uh, uh, after the interview. Thank you. On there. Thank you. And well, tomorrow we're going to be going out to the stadium. Right. And literally every day, I'm banging. I'm setting a goal of hitting so many doors. Good. And uh, well, that's a way to get to meet the voter, and the voters get to meet you. And I get the satisfaction of meeting it. I met an 87-year-old right. woman who had had three strokes. And she was still as sprightly as could be, and it was, she was telling me about things that once were. She was only one generation removed from immigrant. Uh -huh. her, her parents came through Ellis Island. And the story some of these people can tell. And then I met a young man who was only 23 years old, who had two children already, and he asked some of the most profound questions about education, governmental works in, in that area, what we're doing about this, how are we going to get better control of our schools, what are we doing about this? I said, my gosh, there's hope. It's great. I, I love it. Well, and <clears throat> I, I just enjoy meeting people like that. Good, too. good. And I'm sure that they'll enjoy meeting you and uh, listening to why you should be our senator from that district. Well, thank you very well, much, Thank Carl. you very much for the interview. And uh, the people can uh, contact you. Uh, and if they have any questions, and I'm sure there a lot of them will be seeing you wandering around Very the good. district. Very good. I do answer okay. all my emails, and I get, after you take the spam out, I get about 100, 120 emails a day. Yeah. And some of them are informational, others I have to answer, and it can take some time. It takes quite a bit of I've time. Gotten to, I've gotten to sleep on the computer already. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank for you very down. much. Thanks for okay. having me on. Thank you. And uh, the audience can pick up uh, these uh, interviews uh, on uh, the Public Access Channel 96. And uh, the, uh, also uh, in the archive, you can go to uh, nashuagop.org and you can, on their website, uh, see where you can pick up uh, uh, previous issues. Uh, thank you very much for listening.